Hello everybody, Reverend Dr. Rudd here. In this video, I'm going to be covering a uh, very controversial topic. So, if you're just looking to cause problems, or if you can't handle hearing new ideas and new concepts, uh, I'll give you a second to turn the video off. Okay. And those of you that are still watching this, uh, I don't mind if at the end of the video you leave me some questions. Uh, that's fine. Any attacks will not be answered. Uh, I'm, I don't tolerate ignorance. Now, what I want to talk about is the fact that uh, there's a good chance that all of you that are watching this video right now <coughs> are in Israel, in Israel light. Not an Israeli, in Israel light. Uh, what I mean by that is Israeli is what you would be called if you lived in the nation of Israel. In Israel light is what you would be called if you belong to the house of Israel. Now, I did an a article on spiritualmessiahministries.org, uh, September 18th, I believe it was, of 2011, entitled Tracking Israel. If you go to spiritualmessiahministries.org in a search bar in the top right-hand corner, if you type in Tracking Israel, it'll take you right to the article. In that article, uh, which I did do extensive studies with, um, I did not post uh, any links, any sources I do, don't believe, but I did a lot of research into that article. I wanted to know where Israel went, not the nation of Israel, the tribes of Israel. I wanted to know where they where they went. I did that by tracking to the best I can where the apostles went. Obviously, you know they were going after the lost tribes of Israel. Uh, Paul was told to go after the Gentiles, so it would only be logic. And that where the other apostles went, uh, they'd be going after the quote-unquote lost tribes of Israel. <laughs> now there's a belief out there which is called Anglo-Israelism or uh, British Israelism. I like the name Anglo-Israelism. Uh, that suggests that the white people are the Israelites. That, uh, you know, Ireland would be the tribe of Dan. Um, England would be, or Britain, would be the, uh, I believe it was the tribe of Ephraim. Uh, and America would be the tribe of Manasseh. Uh, Germany, I think, was the tribe of Gad. Um, and obviously, these are all primarily white people. Then you have the fact, you know, just to back this up scientifically, uh, they have found skeletal remains on the continental U.S. of Caucasians that date back 10,000 years. Uh, you know, that, out, that predates the Native American skeletons that they're unearthing. And they've also found mummies of white people uh, said to have had red hair, in parts of China and other Asian countries, uh, they have been said to have found white mummies um, in Egypt. And there's actually a story uh, that talks about, you know, how the white people built the pyramids in Egypt. Egypt the Egyptians were white, uh, and they were later blended out and killed off by the Nubians. Uh, same thing with Asia. I think I think it might be much in Asia. Uh, that the Mongoloids pretty much invaded and took over. Um, the same thing happened with the Americas. The, the invasion of the Mongoloids and these other peoples came in and either blended out and or killed off the white people that existed on these lands. 
Now, I'm bringing that up not because I want to sound uh, racist or, you know, white supremacist or anything. I'm just stating scientific facts. The science that is being largely covered up by the liberal scientists and the mainstream uh, ideologies is that the white man was a lot farther stretched out across the planet than uh, had previously thought, or I should say previously taught in all the schools, because this isn't you know, new science. A lot of the scientists know of this, and they also realize that looking at the skeletal structure, that there are three basic skeletal structures, the mongoloid, the negroid, and the caucasoid. They're just not going to teach that in science class because they're going to have to admit that there are differences between the three primary races on the planet, the Caucasians, the Mongoloids, and the Negroids. And then obviously each of those three primary races have the sub-races that belong to each. Uh, like, for example, the, the Caucasians, obviously, you know, they come from the, the Caucasus area. Uh, and those people would include, obviously, all the white people, the, the Nordics, the Europeans, uh, the Scandinavians. <laughs> no, so the white race does have sub-white races, as does the Negroid race, and as does the Mongoloid race. Uh, not to mention that through inbreeding and blending of the races, there's uh, people that have features of this race, those have features of that race, at least, you know, uh, physically, in the, in the flesh, and then the, the, uh, yeah. Anyways, getting back to what I was originally saying, people have this misconception, uh, and I'm back into to, uh, the religion now, people have this misconception that Judaism, or to be Jewish, is Israel. If you are in Israel, in Israeli, uh, you are by default Jewish. And then that's not true. Now, I'm not saying we all got to go out there and carry a star of David, because uh, quite frankly, that's not what I believe. My Savior is Jesus Christ, not whatever this. Uh, thing is that the, that the Jews follow. Today's Jews are the tribe of Judah. That's where the term Jew comes from. Jew, duh. They are one tribe of Israel, which the Bible does say is going to, you know, be punished for what they're doing, as is the tribe of Ephraim. They're going to be punished for turning their backs on their people. Uh... But they are only one tribe of Israel. They only make up one twelfth of Israel, considering there's said to be twelve tribes. Uh, in all actuality, technically there's thirteen tribes, because the one tribe of Israel, being the tribe of Jacob, breaks down into two lesser tribes. And people will try telling me, well, the Bible says that uh, the lost tribes got captured, by the Assyrians, and then the Assyrians got captured by the Babylonians, and the lost tribes fled back to Israel. And to think that the Israelites stayed in that one little section of the globe is completely asinine. I mean, just over time, you had, well, the Irish went everywhere, the Germans went everywhere, the African peoples went everywhere, the Asian people went everywhere. So why would the Israelites stay in that one little region of the world. It just doesn't make any sense. And then you're going to say, well, people are going to suggest, well, these peoples are showing that they only stayed here. Well, look at history. Bring up historical documents. Just because you don't see the features of these primitive peoples and these other civilizations throughout the globe, doesn't mean that they didn't travel. Either A, much like what's happening to the uh, ancient Caucasoid skeletons that are being discovered all over the globe. These other peoples could be getting covered up, where they are finding skeletal remains of these, of these particular peoples, or uh, cultural artifacts from these other peoples that they're covering up and not admitting that they found these artifacts in these uh, foreign areas. 
Or there's also the fact, well, if they m migrated, uh, sooner or later, as we're seeing happen here in America, as well as the whole rest of the uh, of Western culture, the peoples could have blended with the other peoples of the areas they went to. Now, depending on the uh, dominance of the other peoples, they could have either created an entirely new people, or they could have been blended completely out. A uh, perfect example of you we would be the Africans. If you meet with an African, obviously their skin tone and their structure is dominant. So you're going to show, uh, show more of the Negroid uh, features. Right down to the skin tone. You're going to have a darker skin tone. Uh, so there's nothing to say that that's not what happened. The point is that if you look at everything, if you actually take time out to do your research, there might actually be some truth to this Anglo-Israelism. Now, the reason why I brought up that I mentioned this back on September 18th, 2011, uh, kind of midway through my studies, is because obviously people have been mentioning it long before I did. But more recently, Glenn Beck released an article suggesting the same very thing and, and tried using all kinds of historical uh, documents from the founding of America to show that we are indeed, well, the American people uh, are Israelites. Uh, and that our founding fathers uh, truly believed that by breaking off of Britain, and uh, forming their own country, they were fulfilling the complete breakaway out of uh, rulership. <clears throat> and then it's suggested in Anglo-Israelism, okay, that when in the Bible it talks about uh, how the people will be greater than, than the numbers, the number of sands, sand grain. Yeah, I messed that phrase up. Uh, and I doubt many kings ruling over them, and that 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 implies the British Empire. They had colonies all over the globe, uh, and eventually they would fall. Well, we witnessed the fall of the Ameri of the British Empire. We're we're now witnessing the fall of the American Empire, which, which right there would symbolize, if Anglo-Israelism is true, the fall of the trials of Ephraim and Manasseh. There also seems to be a mass migration going on, and it's said by some people who author different different uh, literature on British um, Israelism that people would return to their lands. In other words, all of the tribe of Manasseh will come to the Americas. All the tribe of Ephraim would go to Britain. All the tribe of Gad will return to Germany, etc., etc., and so on. And obviously the tribe of Judah will return to Jerusalem and the surrounding area. To a certain extent, that happened uh, through the formation of the nation of Israel. The Jews uh, fled back towards Israel, towards Jerusalem. And as I said earlier, the term Jew comes from the tribe of Judah. And that right there is very important for everybody to understand because you read the Bible, okay, particularly the Old Testament. That's where the, the terminology is used the most. God refers to his people as Israel, not as Jews. Then all of a sudden you see this sudden change for a little while, it flips back and forth between Israel and Jew, and then it's pretty much Jew. The reason why it does that is because roughly 300 years before the coming of Christ, okay, the tribe of Judah got a little annoyed with the other tribes of Israel and had a little dispute. The tribe of Judah pretty much exiled the other tribes of Israel, and their 
the, the people they had as their slaves, they rearranged where they would be the other tribes of Israel. And they tried to rewrite the uh, Old Testament, or in this case the Torah, to fit their alterations, to try to make themselves the chosen people. And obviously over time, when you're you know, inbreeding with your slave people as well as your own people, you're going to wind up creating a new uh, type of people. And that's how the Jews of today more or less got their skin tone and their overall features. They're a mesh of the original tribe of Judah with their slave peoples. Truth be told, which every Jew out there is going to dispute this fact, and I've seen numerous Jewish websites disputing the entire belief of Anglo-Israelism, uh, that the Jews did intentionally alter the scriptures, just as the Catholics intentionally altered the New Testament. They did this for power. Just as the, the Catholics did it to gain power over the people, as did the tribe of Judah to gain power over the people and, and become the chosen people. That being said, if the Jews of today only comprise of the tribe of Judah and Anglo-Israelism therefore having some substance to it with the historical evidence to back it up of white people being discovered all over the globe and signs showing that they were either blended into the invading peoples or killed off or both by the invading peoples. Uh, that, in my opinion, only helps give weight to the, the theory of Anglo-Israelism. Now, if you were to admit that you are an Israelite, or if you test your blood, your DNA, see how far back you go, you go see if your family really comes from the nation that you believe your nationality uh, is, to admit that you're an Israelite is not necessarily the same thing as to admit that you're a Jew. If you are a Jew, you belong to the tribe of Judah. If you are an Israelite, you sim that simply means you belong to the house of Israel. You can belong to any one of the tribes. And there's a good chance that many of the Irish people belong to the tribe of Dan. Many of the Germans belong to the tribe of Gad. Many of the British belong to the tribe of Ephraim. Many of the American peoples belong to the tribe of Manasseh. <clears throat> uh, I don't remember off the top of my head what tribe the South Americans were believed to be. But if anybody just takes their time and looks this up, you will see that a lot of what I'm saying, uh, information on it is out there. There is historical and biblical proof to back this up. Now, I'm not going to suggest one way or the other whether or not Anglo-Israelism is true or false. All I'm trying to, to get across to everybody is that this anti-Semitism, this anti-Jew uh, uh, a sense of emotion, I guess, for lack of better terms, that I'm seeing from a lot of people, you know, because I do have friends from all walks of life, all, all different kinds of faiths and, and belief systems, uh, is getting a little ridiculous. And there seems to be this big, big misperception of what an Israelite is as opposed to a Jew. Um, and you can't really confuse the terms Israelite with Israeli. It's a very interesting plan of words. Israelite, Israeli. Israelite being house of Israel. The, the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel. Israeli, uh, you're a citizen of the nation of Israel that was formed in 1947, that is currently sitting in an eight and a half mile uh, block of land fighting with modern day Palestine. Israelite and Israeli is not the same thing. Just as Israelite 
does not always necessarily equate to Jew. Israeli, maybe, even though there are some Christian and Muslim and, and other faiths uh, people living in the nation of Israel, so technically they can rightfully so call themselves Israelis, being citizens of Israel, the nation of Israel. But if you come from the tribe of Dan, or the tribe of Ephraim, or the tribe of Vanessa, etc., and so on, you are not uh, necessarily a Jew. You don't come from the tribe of Judah. You would be coming from one of the other tribes. So you would belong to the house of Israel, not the nation of Israel. And there's a lot of people out there, I can guarantee it, a lot of people out there, <coughs> that in all actuality are Israelites. A lot of them could be these hardcore uh, nationalists, um, or what people would deem as racists. It, it really, seriously, would not surprise me. Uh, and they're the ones that have the toughest time with this because they're they're the ones that are going to have the toughest time understanding that Israelite does not mean Jew. If you're from the tribe of uh, tribe of Dan, you are not a Jew. You are a Danite. If you are a tr from the tribe of uh, Gad, you would be a Gadai, not a Jew. If you are a Jew, you come from the tribe of Judah. People are going to have a hard time grasping that, and I understand that. But the facts are the facts. The more research you do, people actually took their time to look into this instead of, you know, watching TV 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And people would just, you know, put down their beer bottle and stop running with uh, inbred emotions and, and actually look into this stuff. They might actually understand what it is that I'm trying to say here. Uh, am I calling a lot of people out there ignorant? Yes, I am. I don't care if you're liberal, if you're conservative, uh, if you believe in multiculturalism, or if you're a, a racial uh, nationalist. It, it really doesn't matter. If you don't understand what I'm trying to say, then technically you're ignorant to the facts. I'm not in, in any way calling myself a Jew. I'm, I'm not a Jew. I don't come from the tribe of Judah. My family uh, comes from Ireland not Jerusalem. So, that being said, I'm not trying to, you know, start fights with anybody. I'm not going to sit here and, and have a war in the comment section of this video. Honest, sincere questions will be answered. Anything else, is going, any attacks or anything of that nature, is going to be ignored. It's really quite simple. SpiritualMessiahMinistries.org in the search bar in the upper right hand corner, type in Tracking Israel, the article should pop right up. Uh, if I remember when I post this, I'll put the link down below the video. And all you gotta do is Google Anglo Israelism or uh, British Israelism, it's more or less the same thing. And you're gonna, you're primarily gonna find, you know, a bunch of Jewish websites talking about it trying to show reasons why it's not so. You might even find a couple of uh, Catholic-based websites trying to explain why it's not so. But if you dig deep, you will discover the facts. And unfortunately, the truth hurts. Nobody really wants to hear the truth when they finally do. Everybody thinks they do, but then when they hear it, they don't want to believe it. And the people that are speaking the truth get called all kinds of names. I've been getting called all kinds of names for the past two and a half years. I'm kind of used to it by now. I've probably made more enemies than I have friends. <clears throat> but, you know what? It is what it is. You know, I'm not going to sit here and preach watered down uh, Christianity because that's what everybody wants to hear, because it's wrong. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you that homosexuality is okay when God himself said that it's an abomination lying down with man as you were with mankind is an abomination in the eyes of God. 
It is a sin. Uh, so I'm not going to sit here and condone it like many of the mainstream churches do. Okay? So there, there's a lot of things that, um, that uh, people just don't like about me, and that's fine. But a lot of people that have, the pro that have problems with me uh, also lack to do their own, <clears throat> their own research. They'll all, you know, stick to what their pastors or their priests taught them. <clears throat> they won't do any of their own uh, research. And I'm not even asking anybody to do, you know, extensive research. I've been looking into this for a long time. And I still don't have all the answers on the on the on the uh, subject. What I'm asking everybody to do is to take five minutes, read the article on spiritualmessiahministries.org called "Tracking Israel," and just Google Anglo-Israelism or uh, British Israelism. And the ironic thing is, too, uh, for a lot of the nationalists out there, is a British Israelism, <coughs> A.K.A. Uh, Anglo-Israelism, was actually first mentioned by a British nationalist. Uh, according to the Jews, the British wanted to make themselves feel important. And that's why they came up with this British Israelism stuff. Do I think that's the case? No, I don't. Now, most things that, come, that, that came up that long ago usually had some ground to uh, stand on. It's just, as time goes on, obviously, the, the popularity uh, decides what gets taught, what lasts, and what doesn't. The less popular uh, material, the less popular beliefs either stay relatively small, where next to nobody hears about it, or they finally get drowned out. That's one of the reasons why almost nobody knows about the alterations in the Old Testament by the, the tribe of Judah 300 years prior to the birth of Christ. And it's also why nobody knows about the alterations uh, made to the New Testament by the Catholics at their formation in 301 AD. They are not uh, in a direct ascension from Jesus' ministry. They came into being 300, in 301 AD. Obviously, Jesus was crucified way before that. Uh, and to this day, they are still making alterations to the scriptures. Not that the Protestant denominations are, you know, free of, of, of uh, charge. Because they're just as guilty for making alterations to the, to the text. Which is why I prefer to use the King James Version at 90 plus percent accuracy rate to the original text. I prefer to use the Tinsdale Bible, but I don't have the $20,000 to purchase an exact replica of the Tinsdale Bible. And, you know, it's a little pricey. Uh, so, for right now, I will stick with the next best thing being the King James. <clears throat> when I master uh, Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic, I will compile the original the texts and the original scriptures, and I will use that. But I have not mastered those languages, so I'm going to stick with the King James. And before anybody goes into a hissy fit about this, just look it up. I mean, I do believe that there is some way to this Anglo-Israelism concept. I mean, if you think about it, and if you actually look up the evidence, uh, the white man, or, you know, variations of the white man, and obviously it wasn't all strictly, you know, the Germans, or strictly the Italians, or strictly the Irish. It was all, the white man in general, or compiling all the sub-races of the white race. We're all over the planet, building the pyramids, and, and, and you know, mummifying our dead, and all this stuff that you see all over the world. So, to me, it's really of no dispute when you have pyramids showing up in, in Mexico in the territories that were once the, uh, the Aztecs and the Maya. It's no wonder that there's pyramids in 
Asia. It's no wonder that, believe it or not, there's pyramids in Europe. It's no wonder that there's mummies in Egypt, there's mummies in, in uh, the South American territories that date back, you know, thousands of years ago. It is no surprise to me that there's uh, mummies in Asia. Now, obviously, you have all these different cultures going on, but you have the same basic thing happening. And the, the mummification, the, the pyramids, the, the same roughly styled houses in different regions of the planet that match, you know, white nations from that same time era and how they constructed their buildings. So it really is no wonder to me that, you know, they all have all these different faiths from all these different uh, regions of the globe. All had very similar stories as far as the flood and creation, etc. and so on. Because chances are, you know, if they were all the original peoples, being the white peoples of, of these different regions that brought these, you know, wonders to the different parts of the globe, we're all uh, individuals of, of different tribes of Israel. Obviously, they would all believe roughly the same thing. And considering, you know, the, the way of recording uh, was limited, and a lot of it was passed down uh, by word of mouth, obviously things can get messed up. And you're also looking at the influence of, of what's surround, you know, of your surroundings, your environment. Uh, that can influence your beliefs a little bit. So, to me, it makes sense that a lot of these pagan beliefs uh, match perfectly with the Christian beliefs. And it makes perfect sense that if these ancient cultures from all over the world have, you know, the same stories, the same basic building structures, and everything else, and on top of that, they're, they're discovering uh, skeletal remains of caucasoids in, in these areas that, you know, the white people were of the different tribes of Israel. That, you know, Anglo-Israelism does have a little bit of weight there. And again, it doesn't mean that all white people are necessarily Israelites. And that doesn't mean that if you are an Israelite, and if you do come from a tribe of Israel, that you are a Jew. Jew does not equate Israel. Jew does not equate Israelite. If you are a Danite, a, uh, or a Gadite, or, you know, from any of the other, other tribes of Israel, it doesn't mean that you're, that you're a Jew. It does not mean that you're Jewish. Israelism, or, or to be an Israelite, to belong to the house of Israel, does not mean that you are Jewish. It doesn't mean that, that, you, that your original people are of the Judaic faith. Okay, that's just one tribe, the tribe of Judah. Uh, you know, pe people really need to uh, understand that. There is a very good possibility that the vast majority of the people... Uh, of the various white races today are in fact Israelites and that they do in fact belong to one of the lost tribes of Israel and if that's the case then that would only help further prove the Bible as far as prophecy is concerned because the Bible says that the, that the tribe of Ephraim is going to get you know, some of God's wrath for, for turning on their people. Well, take a look at Britain. Um, the tribe of Judah is going to is going to be experiencing some hardships for their for their you know going all pagan and turning against God. And uh, I, not that we've necessarily seen that yet, but. It is kind. I mean, if anybody's keeping up with what's going on in the Middle East, particularly right now with what's going on in Syria and all the happenings over there, uh, you'd have to be stupid not to see that something in, in the near future is going to happen to Israel. 
and there's also this rise uh, uh, in anti-Zionist beliefs, anti-Semitic beliefs. You know, it, it's on the rise. So that whole judgment that was mentioned in the Bible going against the tribe of Judah, you know, I think either A, we're at that at the beginning of that right now, or B, it's coming really, really soon. So before anybody bashes what I'm saying, before anybody gets the wrong idea of what I'm saying, post your questions in the comment section of this video. I might do a follow-up to this video because I don't know uh, how well I explained anything in this video. And so I'm going to play off of everybody's questions so I can kind of home in on what I didn't explain well enough. And I'll do a follow-up. Uh, and look into Anglo-Israelism. Uh, Google uh, white mummies found in Western Asia. Google the cloud people of, uh, I believe it was Mexico. But Google the cloud people. Um, Google, I, I said the white mummies of Asia already. J just look into this and look into Anglo-Israelism. Granted, like I said, the majority of what you're going to find is going to be, you know, from Catholics and, and predominantly Jewish people uh, bashing the idea of Anglo-Israelism. But you don't need necessarily something that's promoting it to get the main drift of the beliefs of Anglo-Israelism. And if you truly know your Bible and you can line up the, the verses of the Bible to the beliefs of Anglo-Israelism, you should be able to discern for yourselves uh, if any of these beliefs line up with the Bible or not. Um, I prefer you to use the authorized King James Version because as I said, these newer translations have all taken away from the uh, original text. Right down to the NIV, which takes the deed out of Christ. Some verses are omitted entirely and they completely skip numbers. Um, there's one book that literally goes verse 29, verse 31. What happened in verse 30? You know what I mean? So, line it up with the King James Version of the Bible. And, you know, comparing the Bible verses to the beliefs of Anglo-Israelism, <clears throat> and looking up the uh, <clears throat> scientific and historical proof of the widespread reach of the white people and the white uh, culture should help you determine if there's any weight or any truth whatsoever in the Anglo-Israelism belief. Now here again, I'm, I have to reiterate this because some people just aren't going to understand this. If you are an Israelite, that does not necessarily mean that you are a Jew, okay? Jews only make up one tribe, that being the tribe of Judah. That's where Jew comes from, tribe of Judah. Judaism is the altered belief that Judah created for themselves. It is not necessarily the the original uh, word of God, the original belief of the house of Israel. And going by that, the article I read uh, from WND, I'm talking about what Glenn Beck did on the episodes. I don't have TV, so I couldn't watch Glenn Beck's show myself. Uh, but based on what was said that he said, uh, and the an author's response to Glenn Beck's episode discussing the possibility of Anglo-Israelism and America being the tribe of, of Manasseh. I'm going to have to agree that if Anglo-Israelism is in fact true, and that 
the American peoples and the British peoples and the Irish peoples and the other European peoples. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And the South American peoples were all, are all originally the Wars tribes of Israel. I and mean, then obviously these other the other peoples uh inbred, blended out, altered the cultures, altered the beliefs, etc. and so on. But the original peoples of of these nations were in fact um white people or you know, white races. And these the these original indigenous peoples that wound up getting bled out or uh killed off from the invading peoples were in fact the lost tribes of Israel. If people can come to that understanding that we are all Israelites, that that, that would in turn verify a lot of the, of the events in the Bible and it would also uh, help verify uh, prophecy. It would help reveal a lot of what's going on. It would help verify um, the times that we're in. And it would make it a little bit easier to spot the invading peoples uh, as well as the Antichrist, the false prophet, uh, etc. and so on. And it's just something to consider. You know, I'm not yet suggesting that it is fact, I'm just suggesting to look into it, that it's a very interesting theory, uh, and the fact that Glenn Beck is talking about it and it's starting to make its way into the mainstream, I'm just curious to see where this is going to go and what other people uh, think about, uh, about the idea. Um, if you haven't looked into it, I don't want your ignorance. Ask me your questions, that's fine. If you want to make actual statements about it, please first at least look into it. And then you can have a game of devil's advocate and determine, you know, is this true or is it false? Is it an interesting theory or is it interesting fact? Uh, that I, I do believe would be interesting, whether it's true or false. I think it's, a, it's an interesting theory, an interesting concept. Um, but there is a lot of biblical evidence to back it up. There's a lot of historical evidence and scientific evidence to back up the, to back up Anglo-Israelism. Uh, it is not a New Age belief. It's been around, I believe, the earliest literature I found discussing Anglo-Israelism was written in the late 1700s, early 1800s. So it's been around for a while. And obviously, you know, somebody didn't just come up with it. You know, they, they broke down the ideas that they got from somewhere. So, I'm still looking into it. If anybody has any information, please share it with me, but provide sources. Uh, and please let me know what, what, what your opinions of, of this are. The fact that uh, the nation of Israel only consists of one tribe of Israel, being the tribe of Judah, and the fact that the other people, primarily the white people, um, not only are they the original indigenous people of a lot of areas of the globe, um, obviously the different parts of the white race that have since been exterminated, uh, being the lost tribes of Israel. What do you feel um, of the idea that you yourself could very well belong to a lost tribe of Israel. And those of you that would want to be belonging to the tribe of Ephraim, how do you feel about the fact that you're going to get punished, or at least the leaders are going to get punished, for turning their back 
on the people. And how would you feel about the idea that the lost tribes of Israel, uh, if they are the white people, are essentially going to be safe? from all this wrath, and the, and the wrath is being aimed towards the tribe of Ephraim and the tribe of Judah for intentionally turning their back on their people, on their tribes, and leading them down the road to paganism. Now, as I said, there is evidence of this, and to back this up in the Bible, and history, and science. Uh, so just think about it. Let it toss around inside your head, Google it, look into this stuff. And I think if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, if you have any comments about it, if you've actually looked into it, please leave me the information. Uh, the, the more I can, you know, you know, learn about this particular subject, uh, the better. <clears throat> you know, I, I think it's a very, very interesting uh, concept to say the least. And as I was saying earlier, the only problem that I have with it is the fact that a lot of people uh, are one are not going to want to believe it, even if it was true, and that even if it was true, a lot of people just are not going to understand the concept that being an Israelite does not by default make you a Jew. I mean, the tribe of Dan are not Jews, they're Danites, etc. and so on. The Jews are on top of Judah. And it does not mean you have to go out there, you know, flaunting around the Star of David either. <clears throat> that was a symbol adopted by the Jews for the nation of Israel. It's not necessarily the symbol for the house of Israel. Myself being a follower of Christ, that symbol is the cross. Christ told us to bear our cross and that is exactly what I'm going to do. Christ told us not to listen to any mere man but to ask questions and that's exactly what I'm doing. If somebody tells me something or I discover something I'm going to look into it. I'm not going to just going to blindly believe it because it sounds good. You know, that's how today's Christianity got so watered down. Everybody's just blindly following. Nobody's asking any questions. Nobody's just looking for the uh, factual information on, on the subject matter. They're just going along with what the pastor or the priest is telling them, which is, which is wrong. That being said, Remember, Israelite, <clears throat> Israelite does not equate Israeli, and Israelite does not equate Jew. It is possible that you can be an Israelite and not be a Jew. There were more than, than just the one tribe of Israel. Judah does not make up the entire house of Israel. And I do think it would be absurd, uh, whether Anglo-Israelism is correct or not, to think that, you know, all the other tribes of Israel all got absorbed into the one tribe of Judah. I just can't believe that. I refuse to believe that. And until I get hard, concrete evidence to suggest that is true, I'm not going to believe that. Right now, uh... Anglo-Israelism is kind of making sense, especially considering <clears throat> it has the Bible, uh, history, and science all backing it up. Albeit that the science and the historical events are being covered up by the uh, current people uh, of these areas around the globe as well as getting assistance from our own. And th there's been several discoveries of co caucasoid skeletons 
found right here in, in America that the Native, the Native Americans are actually enlisting the Army Corps of Engineers to help cover up, to make sure that these ancient uh, skeletons that can more or less prove that the Caucasoid was here first um, cannot be proven. Uh, but again, there is evidence of that on the internet. Some of this was documented before the skeletons were all destroyed and the evidence was destroyed. <laughs> so, just, <coughs> excuse me, just please look it up. Take a few minutes and, and just look into it. And uh, let me know what you personally feel about the concept of Anglo-Israelism and the possibility that you are an Israelite and that you are a member of the House of Israel. The only question being, well, what tribe uh, does your family originate from? Obviously, that would depend on what nation you come from. Are you South American, North American, uh, European? You know, obviously that all plays into what tribe you would uh, be coming from. Everybody knows who the people of the tribe of Judah are. They're the Jews. But people that belong to the other tribes of Israel may not know who they are. Especially considering it seems to be a common belief that all the lost tribes made it back to Israel. When, quite frankly, that's the most absurd thing I have ever heard anybody uh, suggest. Just, just based on modern trends of migration. It would be absurd to think that every last individual uh, made it back to Israel especially considering the evidence that is in the Bible that, that shows the migration. So, uh, that being said, before I want to keep on repeating myself, so, one last time, spiritualmessiahministries.org, upper right-hand corner, type in Tracking Israel, I'll try to remember to post the link in the description area of this video. Check that out. Uh, Google Anglo-Israelism, look up the, uh, white mummies of Asia, or the red-headed mummies of Asia, look up the white, uh, Egyptians, look up the cloud people, you know, Look, look into everything that I, that I mentioned in this video. And after you've gathered, you know, a little bit more facts, a little bit more information than what we stated here, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, well, you know, do you feel Anglo-Israelism holds any weight? Why or why not? Uh, do you understand the concept that if you indeed are an Israelite, that, that does not necessarily mean that you are a Jew. Do you understand the concept that Jew does not equate Israelite? That Israelite does not equate Israeli? You know, it, it, all this is a fanciful plan on words. That's all it is. You know, people can be extremely arrogant and ignorant to that fact. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm getting tired of watching words of ignorance. I did mention this briefly, you know, almost two years ago now, and I'm bringing it up again now, because I am seeing it starting to make a headway into the mainstream, and I would like to uh, know what everybody's beliefs are on it, as it continues to make its way into the mainstream, and, and more people are discussing it. You know, so there's more information about Anglo-Israelism, and the possibilities thereof, arises, you know, let me know what you feel about it. Let me know what you think. That being said, I 
thank you all for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, and as I said earlier, based on the, the questions that I do receive, uh, I will do a follow-up to this video. Uh, if I feel I didn't explain something well enough, I will do a follow-up to this video. Um, obviously, i got to sit there and watch it. And I just wanted to make a quick point, which obviously turned into a rather lengthy point. Uh, so just look into it. Let me know what, you, what your feelings are on it. If you have any information that I don't have, uh, please let me know about it. Um, the, the chances of there being a follow-up to this video on this topic, I'm going to say right now, are high. Uh, only because I'm, I'm, I'm still doing my research into this. I'm expecting people to have some interesting tidbits of information for me to look at. Uh, I just don't know when the updated video, the continuation of this video, is going to be posted. Uh, that being said, I again thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Please leave me any questions or comments. Uh, and God bless.